Mr. PC Electronics here. Today I'm going to show you how to fix the phantom menu button on these Samsung phones. Now this is a Samsung Galaxy S2. Uh, this applies to maybe even the S3. Also uh, Epic, pretty much any Samsung. Uh, what will happen is, is you'll be browsing the internet and all of a sudden the menu button will just start popping up, popping up, popping up and you can't hit back because when you hit back it goes back to the next page and it's just a it's a mess so here's how you fix it okay so here's exactly what's happening you power on your phone you slide the screen and you go to type something in and when you do so it starts going like this with the menu button popping up like crazy every time you go to touch something the menu button pops up and you can't get to what you're doing now let me explain why this is happening the way Samsung designed these phones, it's down either around here or this end. When I take it apart, I'll be able to show you better. It's pretty much, there's an RF signal, radio, frequ radio frequency, and it's picking up the cell towers. When you go out and you're driving around and the signal starts to fade and it gets down to one or two bars, it has to amp up the radio frequency so that it can pick up more signal. Once it does that, the frequency transfers from the antenna clips and it, it goes right next to the multi-key chip. And that chip, it's a Melfest chip, that's what they call it, that controls your touch keys down here. And when the frequency of the radio frequency to pick up your signal gets to a certain megahertz, it ends up making these keys function by the uh, touch key chip. So what we need to do is we need to cover that touch key chip with a anti-radio frequency uh, tape or in this case we're going to make it and I'll show you what to use. The tools you're going to need for this job is some heavy duty aluminum foil. You can get it at Walmart, like three bucks. Some duct tape. You don't need the big roll of duct tape. All you need is the 10 yard tape that's only about a dollar something and change. Um, a pair of scissors, your phone, and a Phillips head screwdriver, a very small one. Okay, so we have our Phillips head screwdrivers here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the phone on its back. We're going to pop open the little back piece, and we're right here. There's a little indention. We're going to pop the battery out, set that aside, and don't forget to take out your micro SD. Slide that out and set that aside. Now as far as screws, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six screws that we got to worry about right now. So we want to get our Phillips head and find our Phillips head screw driver that fits. There we go. That one fits. And we want to remove these six screws. Now if you have don't have a screen protector on here, I suggest laying a cloth down so you don't scratch your screen, but I have a screen protector so I'm not really concerned. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out these screws. We're going to take out all six of them and set them aside. And now that we have all those screws out, I'm going to kind of tap them until all six come out. Now you have all six screws out. We're going to pretty much, you can take a plastic piece to peel this out, um, but it should just pop right out. Now, it's going to, this part doesn't split right here. It's actually the whole entire silver piece comes out. So you're going to want to kind of put your thumb on the back part here and kind of pull back on it like this. Now be careful not to put too much pressure on the actual glass. So, you gotta be careful because they are pretty fragile. And it, it's gonna take some pressure, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna just pop off super easy. So, you put your nails in there and you kind of pull up. So, we got it about 40% off right now. There's a little hook right here, if you can see it right there. You're going to want to get a little flat head screwdriver, small one. And you're going to want to kind of 
Let me see if you can see this. You're going to want to kind of pull up on this little plastic piece right here. So I'm going to stick my screwdriver in there. Kind of try to pop it up so that it, there we go. Now that that came off, you can kind of just lift, but just be careful. I'm just making sure all my buttons are out. All right, so on this last one right here, you're just going to pull out as far as you can and push down because they kind of clip in. So now we have the back off. Okay, I have to have the camera sideways because I can't have the camera in front of me, obviously, my shadow. But uh, here's the phone, here's your charger port, and this is exactly where that uh, touch chip is going to be. It's underneath this piece, so we got to remove one screw here, and then one screw at the top where the, um, this is the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and your webcam is right here. So right here at the very top, we're going to remove this one. Sorry for the light shadow. I can't really do much about it. And then right here, take that out. Now, after we've taken that out, we got a, a, a little label ribbon right here. We got a ribbon here, 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 and one right here. So I'll take them off in front of you. Let me just check to make sure it's in the camera. All right, you still can see it. And we're gonna pop this one out. You just lift and pull out. Now this is actual ribbon to the touch chip. So that's the main problem we're having. I'll show you what's causing that problem here in a second. So be careful not to, you know, rip some any chips off. We don't want that happening. And we got one, two, three, and we got one here. We got four. Just pull up. And then we got another one, which I'm going to take a flathead, and it's right here. It's the actual uh, speaker. And that's it for that. We got those screws out, all the ribbons out. Here's what the problem is. These little gold-plated pins, or pieces of metal, these are all your antenna right here. All your antennas. All of them. There's some, once you lift up, there's another one. And this is the problem right here. This antenna right here is letting off a radio frequency. All antennas do. What happens is, is the reason why the phantom menu starts popping up like crazy when you go off Wi-Fi. It'll never do it on Wi-Fi because uh, what's happening is, is this antenna, when your signal goes low, when you get in a low, um, a low signal zone for your mobile service, your cell phone has to boost its radio frequencies. So in order to do that, it boosts it up, and then what happens is it releases some of the radio frequency, and look where it is. Look. This antenna under here, it's a poor design from Samsung, is right smack dab right here. And what's this right here? That's your actual chip for the touch chip. So what's happening is, is once it hits like 800 megahertz frequency or something, it's sending that signal over to the chip, the touch chip, and the touch chip's picking up on it thinking that you're actually pressing a button and you're not, and it's tweaking out because the radio frequency has boosted and now it's kind of getting all over this chip and the chip's picking up on it. So we need to reflect the radio frequency away from the chip. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And this is the problem from here to here is the problem. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out a little piece where this chip is right here. Now let's see how big we're going to need it because when we put this back on we don't want it to interfere with anything else okay so we got an opening we want to stay away from this part right here that's where the actual antenna is going to land and right here so we have all this open space right here yeah okay so we're good as long as we got all the open space so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a little piece out. Small piece of tape. There we go. And it looks like it's covering it. Let's see if we can keep it just a hair away from it. It's kind of tough. Line it up, but 
it should be good and that looks pretty promising right there all right so I'm going to mark it out all right let's put the piece of tape over top of it so I got the tape covered over everything just kind of push in the nooks and crannies make sure everything's kind of just mushed in and you can see it like that there we go it's all covered up now we're gonna take another piece of tape actually the same size that we just used and we're gonna put that over but before we do we're gonna take a piece of tin foil a very small small piece of tin foil alright and we're going to put it over the actual chip like that now we're going to take our original piece of tape it's kind of hit or miss so you got to get it right on the first time I'm going to turn it around. Right like that. And cover it all the way up. And just snip off the excess. There we go. And just smush it down real good. And that's what it looks like. Now we're blocking out the radio frequencies that are trying to get to that chip from this antenna right here. And we shouldn't have any more phantom pop-ups. Okay, next step's next. Just take the board right here and we're gonna put it on there. And as you can see, the antenna is nowhere near where we need to be. So we're going to just kind of pick everything up, all the little ribbons. Get it all lined up. Make sure all the ribbons are out of the way. Double check underneath to make sure that your antenna is still making contact, which it is. Go ahead and put all your little ribbons on, just kind of push on top of them, line them up, and push until they click. Make sure they're all the way clicked or else it won't work, whatever that ribbon goes to. So we got all our ribbons in there. Now we're getting ready to install the back on. Don't forget your two screws on the motherboard. Hey, it happens. Nobody's perfect. We all make uh, little mistakes, but let's not make them very often. <laughs> so put the screw on the top up here. And the one right here on the bottom. Corner. Let's see here. And if you don't remember where they go, you just kind of put it over top. So we got all the screws here. And the only one I'm not seeing is this one right here. So this is the one that comes off right down here on the bottom. Okay, so now we're ready to put the top on. You're gonna to wanna to go from the top first. Kind of overlap it just a little bit. There we go. Top first, because you gotta get past that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And the rest, just kind of click in the edges. You'll know when it's completely flush with the LCD screen that it's all the way in. Make sure you press your buttons on the side to make sure they work. Alright, now that that's done, all we're going to do is put in the remainder six screws. Now you're done putting the six screws in, you're just going to take your SD card, slide it in there, push until it clicks, put your battery back in, take your back, Slide that back in, make sure everything clicks nicely, flip it over, hold your power button, and just make sure everything still works.
Now that everything's up and running, just go ahead and open your phone. Hit the internet. Make sure everything's working good. And as you can see, we can hit the menu button. And our menu button's still working for a touch screen. Phone just loaded, so it's, you know, got to still boot up. But everything's working good. And that's it. Now go out, drive in the spots where you're getting low signal, and test, and you should no longer have the phantom menu pop up. Well guys, hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on how to fix that phantom menu button that pops up all the time on the Samsungs. If you guys like my video, go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>